Good evening, everybody. This is Love Revival Live. And tonight is prophetic night. Some of you guys were with us last night. And we had uh, such a great time with Ian Andrews, the great legendary healing minister out of the UK, telling us about all the steps into his calling, everything from getting touched in a meeting with Catherine Kuhlman and also sparking revivals in the Catholic Charismatic Church in Canada. Uh, if, you, if you haven't heard the story from yesterday, the revival talk we had yesterday, go ahead and watch that. It was tremendous. And the power of God was so vividly felt during the ministry time. And, and Ian is such a father in the faith and we had a privilege to have him with us live yesterday but it's all available on our youtube channel and on facebook but tonight my friends is prophetic night and uh, here to honor us with his presence once again is no other than john e thomas all the way from dallas texas area and we're going to invite him right now john hey Good to have you back, sir. Oh, it's good to be back. Yes. It is. It's been a while. It's been a while. Time flies in this crazy season. Yeah. For some reason, when everything seems to slow down, it, it doesn't slow down. <laughs> you, start, you have so much to think about. You have so much to do in the, in the quiet seasons. <laughs> this is true. Yes. Very true. So, what's happening with John? For people that don't know you, give you just a brief introduction. Who is Johnny Thomas and where yeah. you're located right now and what's happening as I, we speak? So I live in the Dallas, Texas area in the United States, and I am heading up Streams Ministries, which was a ministry that John Paul Jackson started back in 1994 to uh, bring reformation to the prophetic. And... We do a lot of training and equipping on hearing from God, understanding prophetic ministry, understanding dreams and visions and the metaphorical language of God. So we have in this last season, we've taken a lot of the things that John Paul taught and some of the things that I've discovered. And we've developed this uh, course that we're calling Streams Academy, which is a year long in-depth academy on uh, prophetic ministry. And we've been doing that. It's been a lot of fun. I've been doing a lot of filming because we have yeah. the classes as well as live interactions. And so I've been really busy doing that, but enjoying myself. Yeah. And, uh, and you're no stranger to Love Revival concept or TV show or whatever we're going to call it. You've been on quite some time now, right? Yes. Yeah. A few times. Yes. I the first time when I was there in Sweden for the, the new wine conference. Exactly. Exactly. And I had the privilege to have you in my home. We put up a studio in my home and I don't know if it was four or five episodes of Love Revival and uh, something. I, can, I, can I just tell the audience right now what I, what I love about, about you? Uh, I don't want to make you blush or anything right now, <laughs> but I really love the humbleness of a brother in Christ that carries, even though you're, you're you know, I mean, you're, you're a known face in America and you're somebody who's uh, heading an, a very known ministry and so forth. You're still very humble and you are very concerned about bringing credibility to the prophetic ministry. 
and that's what we're all about as well. And some of the some of the live and some of the recorded for uh, recorded programs that we've done has been marinated in the Father's love, mm -hmm. because you're all about prophecy and love, yes. and uh, and I love that because when you're when you're rooted and grounded in love and founded in the scriptures. I forgot to say that so you're very found, founded or, or you're standing on the scriptures when it comes to prophetic revelation. You're on safe ground. If you have the word and love, you're on very, very safe ground. And that's something I love with you, my friend, really. That, that's awesome. That, that's, my, that's my prayer, my goal, that, that yeah. those very things, that, that firm foundation in scripture, and that in every demonstration that there would be a clear recognition of the love of God because it, it's, it's everything. Yeah. So tonight, uh, I actually, you know, a couple of minutes ago, I asked John, is it okay to bring up maybe some controversial things? <laughs> <laughs> so before we say what that is all about, please go ahead and share this broadcast with somebody. Please go ahead and tell somebody that we're live right now. It's so easy to share. It's totally free of charge. And it's a gift to us <laughs> to, to spread the word and, and uh, also get people in our scope to minister to tonight. Because that's what we're expecting. Good TV, good, a good live stream is when God shows up and God shows off his great yeah. and mighty mercy. And that's what we're expecting tonight. John. Let's just greet a couple of people before we get started. And uh, I know some people are sharing right now and more people will tune in in just a little bit. We have um, Tirsa watching from Sweden, Kari watching from Norway, Annika watching from Sweden, Ingalil, Sweden, Desiree, Sweden, many people from Sweden, Helena, Sweden, Colin watching from Kent uh, from the UK, Åsa watching from Norway, we have Lena, Gothenburg, Sweden, Anne, England, uh, Britt Inger watching from Umeå, Sweden, Priani watching from London, UK, Christopher, Sweden, Priani shared Bob watching from Somerset, England. Have you heard about Somerset, John? I have, I have. Yeah. I, I've met some people from Somerset, but I haven't personally been there. No, no. Marie-Louise, Västerås, Sweden, and so many other places in Sweden. I'm jumping. We have Finland online, England again. Maria from Sweden says, dear, Dear sis or dear sir, I'm not who you're greeting, Maria. <laughs> Erna, watching from Örebro, Sweden. New Zealand is with us. God bless you. Awesome. Marie, watching from New Zealand. God bless you. I guess it's... I cannot even think what, what time zone you're in right now. Diana, Sweden. We have uh, Canada. Mark, watching on Twitch. Do you know the stream? John, do you know the stream platform Twitch? I do. I've not used yeah. it, but I'm, I'm very familiar yeah. with it. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's for us gamers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why and, I'm and familiar with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've seen it's, a few streams, but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's exactly. great. <laughs> so somebody on Twitch is going to get blessed tonight. Watching from Canada. Marina, watching from Sweden. God bless you. Clary, England. Pessy, Finland. I think I greeted many people enough right now. Norway is with us. God bless you guys. Good to have you here. So, John, yeah. let's get into the controversial stuff right now. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes I get, this, I get this question a lot. And you probably, not a lot, but sometimes. And I think you have received this question also. But, and you, and it's, it's very much because... We are so negative in our perspective and we think we, we, we wanted to know all the we want to know the good apples from the bad apples and therefore we, we, we focus so much on the bad apples. 
And the question I receive sometimes and probably you also is, what is a false prophet? Yes. Funny enough, the, the section on Streams Academy that uh, we're going to be teaching in two weeks, we, we have a whole section on that. So I, I just got done doing the videos for that uh, last week. So this is a little bit fresh in my mind. Um, I mean, there's, there's a couple things that are key. You've got Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 18, 1 John chapter 4, and then Matthew chapter 7 are, are, are four major passes, passages that talk about false prophets. So Deuteronomy 13, you have someone who uh, they, they prophesy and everything that they say comes to pass but they're leading you to other gods. The, there's an apostasy. Their, the, their, their, their gift is real. Their gift is true, but they're leading you to other things. And whether that be, uh, we, we have a lot of understanding now of the idols of the heart. Uh, in biblical times, they were pretty physical items, but we, we've kind of moved that into mental idols or, or, or idols of the heart, if you will. And, and those kinds of issues, when somebody is, is doing that and leading that there, that is a false prophet. Deuteronomy 18 talks about somebody that misses it and leads you to other gods. That person is a false prophet. And, and Moses clarifies in that passage, he says it's different if they're not leading you to other gods. If they just miss it, then that they've just spoken presumptuously. Don't listen to them. Don't give them a lot of credit. Don't, don't allow that to be a person that, that influences you or that you follow for, for revelation anymore. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got those two. Then in 1 John chapter 4, it talks about false prophets are people that are in the church, but they have bad doctrine. They are teaching doctrine that is not biblically based. It's not founded on what we call the foundations of the church. And most uh, of the church in the world would recognize the Apostles' Creed as a foundational statement of what we can see in Scripture if, they're, if we're violating something in there. So contradicting the deity of Jesus Christ, the exclusivity of Jesus Christ, the reality of God, the, these key pieces, then that is someone that's a false prophet, whether they have prophetic gifting that is accurate or inaccurate. So that, that is a key. And then Matthew chapter seven is the other thing. It's this passage in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes some time to talk about false prophets. And he says, you'll recognize them by their fruit. Good tree does not bear bad fruit. A bad tree does not bear good fruit. So you will recognize false prophets by their fruit. And then he goes on and says, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many mighty miracles in your name? And yet I will say to them, go away from me, for I do not know you. We, we don't have that intimate relationship. So this is people that, one, their life is not lining up with the reality. He calls them workers of lawlessness, which means people mm -hmm. that live as if there was no standard of morality. Uh, and yet they have supernatural activity. They have miracles, they're casting out demons, they're prophesying, mm -hmm. but there's not that intimate relationship with Jesus that is revealed by the fruit of the Spirit being evident in that person's life. Mm. Wow, that's a good answer. Uh, would you, so if, if you break it down to just, you know, a sentence or whatever, that's hard to do, but mm -hmm. would you say you can say that it's a person that leads you away from Christ. That's exactly it. That, that's how that, I, if I would to simplify that, that's exactly how I would say it. So don't, don't, go, don't go around telling everybody right now who, who leads people astray that they're <laughs> false prophets. <laughs> but uh, because so many people, you mentioned uh, Matthew 7, uh, 7 verse 21 and forward. So many people are puzzled by that. Some people says it's it's that sorcery it's uh, false miracle workers but isn't it people that that do it in the name of jesus it is it is uh, because that was what but jesus they're, but they're lacking love right that's what you're saying they're lacking yes. the nature of god yeah yeah 
Yeah, that that's exactly because their comment was, "Lord, we didn't we prophesied in your name, we cast out demons in your name, we did mighty miracles in your name." Yeah, and yet I will say to them in that day, "Get away from me! I did not know you. We we weren't intimate hmm. in relationship with each other." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I, th- I think the yeah. the scripture that really grabs me when I think about like if I was going to summarize in a sentence like you did, it's that that thing at Paul. Paul's Paul's talking about false apostles, not false prophets, but his concern with these false apostles is he said, "I'm concerned that they're leading you away from a simple devotion to Jesus Christ." Yeah, that's good. That's the key. Yeah, and you know, you know. Sometimes you can lean in one ditch and then you lean to the another ditch. The other ditch is that all of a sudden you don't want to call anybody a false prophet, but yet Jesus warns for false prophets. Right. So it's it's not like we can throw away, you know, don't call anybody a false prophets because everybody's trying hard and people, you know, trying to hear God and then they get it wrong and and that's the definition too. It's not false prophets is is not a person who gets it wrong, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, because we're all we're all trying out. We're all in, you know, trying to understand and trying to communicate God's heart. So what you're saying is, I'm tr- I'm trying to say it in another in another way. What you're saying is that a person who has who don't have the right motivation and lead people astray. Yeah. Not right yeah. motivation leading people astray. Thank you. Yeah. You're helping me. You're helping right, me right now and probably somebody else tonight. You know, I think if, yeah. It, it some of the some of the concern that people have so on both sides. You one, you know, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with prophecy because there's false prophets. We, you don't have that mm. option if you're if you're reading scripture. Um well, I don't want to call anybody a false prophet because I don't want to miss anything that God does. You don't have that option in Scripture. But on this side, you have this concern of, well, okay, so I, I discern that this is a false prophet. So what do I do about it? And the the idea, I think so many people think that they're responsible, that if they recognize somebody as a false prophet, now they're responsible to tell everybody that they're a false prophet. But that actually is not the case. But Paul, as a leader, he did point out in names specifically people that were false teachers, people that were false prophets, and, and, and he did do that. But that was not the, the norm. If we don't have relationship with somebody and we recognize that they're a false prophet, we, we just don't have anything to do with them. We, we stop listening to what they have to say. We don't follow them and we go about our lives. We're not responsible to be watchdogs. I, I had a friend that had this experience, and I think you, you'll like this. It was um, quite a, quite an interesting experience. In this, is is it having an open vision, and in this experience, he is walking through um, a metaphorical part of heaven. He's walking through the residential area of heaven. This this the, in the experience that he has with Jesus. And they're walking down the street and there's all these beautiful houses and they're looking at them and they're talking about, well, this person and what they did and why they got this mansion and this person, what they did and why they got this mansion. And as they're continuing down the street, they come to this one house and there's a dog in the front yard on a chain. And as they get close, like some dogs would do, this dog just runs out to the end of the chain and starts barking at them the whole time that they're walking past the house. It's just rrr, 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 the whole time. And so they, they can't even talk. It was just so weird and so out of place. And they get past that property and the dog stops barking. And he's just thinking that was so weird. And then Jesus looks at him and says, that was weird, wasn't it? And he goes, yeah, that was weird. He goes, I never asked for watch dogs in my kingdom. I said, watch men. Mm. Yeah. And that's such a, a poignant point. Our, 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 goal, mm-hmm. our goal is not to be watchdogs. No, no. I mean, there's plenty of heresy hunters out there. Yeah. I guess you, you encounter them as well. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, so, what's so annoying with it, 
you know, I'm, I'm dealing with somebody right now that, that, you know, leaves comments and, and don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Just because, you know, yesterday we had someone who brought up, brought up a great revival within the Catholic Church. He was led into the Catholic Church into, you know, different conferences and different people within the Catholic Charismatic. And all of a sudden people, you know, push the heresy mm. button <laughs> because right. they cannot they cannot discern that God has a heart for anyone. God has a heart for anyone and you cannot just dis di disqualify people because they don't have exactly the same doctrine as you have. Uh, yeah. But still profess Jesus to be the son of the living God. I mean, um, yeah, so there's a lot of watchdogs, I hear you, but yeah. not so many watchmen. That's good. That's really good. You know what? Can I just bring up something else, my friend? Mm -hmm. I hate to stay on the negative or stay on the, you know, stay on all the, 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 the hard questions, but what about this question? Why did so many prophets get it wrong? And I yeah. think the audience and you as well know what I'm talking about, <laughs> especially, you know, we have an American here and, and he's, he has to stand uh, speaking on, on the na his nation's behalf <laughs> a little bit now. Uh, but I know you have addressed this. I know it's, um, it's a little bit of a crisis in the prophetic community in America. I'm not saying it's a crisis, but it's, it's a credibility crisis when so many you know, very known prophetic voices is very going out very strongly saying that they believe this is how it's going to be. Uh, right. Before you answer this question, let okay. me just ask you another question. You feel free to, to answer in which order. But is it necessary to prophesy who's going to be the president? Mm. Or should That's you just wait question. for the answer? Yeah. Do you just leave it up for the voters or do you need to prophesy? Of course yeah. you can find a scripture somewhere where, where someone someone says that you're going to that where prophet speaks to leaders concerning future and so forth. But is it really necessary? That's my question. Yeah. Well, in that that one is that one is easy. Um I I, I really don't think it's necessary. Is it inherently wrong? No, I, I think that it, it's within the realm of possibilities. I mean, it's, this is not a this is not a good um, picture of what I'm trying to say, but it gives a principle. So, meaning this isn't the same thing. But Samuel prophesied Saul as king, prophesied David as king. Now, that was specifically about the people of Israel who were God's covenant people. And that was a unique covenant with a unique nation. And no other nation has that unique covenant that God had with Israel. So that, as, as in that way, it doesn't fit. But the concept that God would prophesy who was going to be king, Cyrus was going to be king. Um, now, I didn't actually say that he was going to be king of a, a particular nation, but that he was going to be in a place to rebuild the temple. Um, the, the fact that Nebuchadnezzar was going to be brought down, uh, Elijah was told to anoint, I believe it was Ben Hadad as the king of Aram. And so you, you have this, it has happened and, and it is possible. It, it is one of the things that God does, but it is not necessary. And one of the, one of the things, and for, for, as an American, I, I can say this as an American, um, one, one of the things that has happened that is very dangerous in America is this idea of, of what has been historically called manifest destiny. And that idea is when, um, when we start to compare the whatever nation we are, and specifically manifest destiny is a phrase that's been used about America. So that particular phrase is this, but Anytime any country begins to compare the, their, their relationship with God as a country 
and, and equate it with the covenant that God had with the nation of Israel, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. God loves every country and he has a plan for every country. He, he has desires and he has things that he's going to judge them on if they do not do correctly. There is a standard and, and all of the kingdoms of this world will be one day the kingdom of our Lord. But we as a people, we can make a covenant with God, but God made a covenant with Israel. God did not make a covenant with America. He did not make a covenant with, with Sweden or Australia or Russia or, or any of the others. He made a covenant with the nation of Israel. Yeah. And so when we begin to get that mixed up, it creates problems in some of the problems and not all of because this is a broad issue of why did the prophetics get it, get it wrong. But some of them got it wrong because they started to think of America. They would never use these words, but they began to think of America as the new Israel mm -hmm. and began to think that there was this this covenant like America was essential to the plan of God in the world, the plan of God in the church, rather than having a role. And, and I believe that America does have a role simply because America has so much influence worldwide. But there's a difference between having responsibility and having a role and being essential. And, and that is that was one of the one of the big issues. Mm. Um, I think one one of the other things, you know, why why did the prophets get it wrong? There's a difference between what would be best for the kingdom and what's actually going to happen sometimes. Hmm. So, you know, the the amount of work that Donald Trump did for the church in America, for religious freedoms, uh, to to bring about the the movement towards removing abortion, he did more towards that than any other president since it became legalized, what he did for the nation of Israel and, and holding on to, to that relationship there. He did more good in those areas than probably any other president, but there was still more that could have been done. Um, so yeah, it would have been good for those areas, yet that does not mean clearly that God said that he was going to be president. And I think that's that's where we we many people missed it in you know what would be good versus what is what is God's will. Because just because something is the right thing doesn't mean that God's going to make it happen. Hmm. There's a lot of good things and right things that God doesn't make happen because he's still allowing free will. Because as soon as he removes free will, then nobody else can get saved. It's over. There's no more decision that can be made. And so until that moment, there are things that happen that are not the ultimate good for the kingdom and for a people or a person. Uh, so, so you've got that. And then the other piece is uh, misunderstanding revelation. I, I think some people got revelation and they misinterpreted it or they misunderstood it. And so in their communication, they, they did not say it correctly. I mean, we still have yet to hear, and I, have, I do not personally have a word for this, but some are saying, oh, well, you know, don't, you know the, there was going to be two terms. Uh, I guess they're just not consecutive. Okay, I, I can, if, if that's the case, and if that's the Lord, which I, I just don't know. I, God has not spoken to me about that, so I, I can't say anything about it. Um, you can't say that he, he's not going to lose the election, that he's still the president. You have to be a little bit more clear. So I think that there was some that people were, were getting a little bit of revelation possibly, and not just in that, but there was a misinterpretation and a misapplication of what was being said. And, and some are still arguing that, that, uh, that the election was won, but that it, there was fraud that caused it not to happen. And, and again, I don't have enough information on that. God hasn't yeah, spoken yeah. to me about that. So I, I can't say one way or the other. Uh -huh. um, but either way, if you said that he was still going to be president, you were wrong because he's not. 
And, and I think that we, we need humility, enough humility that we actually apologize when we misunderstand, when we miss a prophetic word, when we proclaim it wrong, when we misinterpret it, or when we misapply it. It's possible that we get the revelation right, but we got the interpretation wrong, we got the application wrong, and we proclaim the wrong thing, right? There's four parts to the prophetic word. Or, or we had the revelation and the interpretation, but we applied it into the wrong arena and we said it the wrong way. There, there's any of those four can be missed. And no matter which of the four, um, we, we need to have the humility just to apologize and learn from our mistakes. Now, I thought that I was hearing from God, but I didn't hear from God or hey, I misunderstood what God was saying. And I was being given a intercessory burden. I wasn't being given a promise. And I, I think that that's, that's one of the things that I notice a lot. And, and it's not just in this issue. Uh, I, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times that I know somebody that has had a chronic illness and people have revelation and they begin to say that they're not going to die from this illness and then the person dies hmm. uh I, i've seen where god is miraculously healed but i've also seen where it wasn't and and i don't think that sometimes i think that there's just their own desire I, and that's very possible but sometimes god is giving people an intercessory burden so that they would pray but that comes as revelation but revelation is not necessarily a prophetic word if you're getting an intercessory burden to pray, you should not give it as a prophetic word to say because it's not been decided yet. There's an invitation to pray. And, and that I think we've missed and misunderstood. It's too easy to share what we think is revelation in the world that we have with social media, being able to do something like this um, it, it's, it's too easy to share things that have not been really discerned and, and haven't been brought into the broader council of the church. Because the, the Bible says that one or two prophets speak and then the others judge, which means the person that gives the prophetic word does not have the right to tell anybody else that they need to believe that prophetic word. The others judge, not the person that gave the word. Of course, they wouldn't have given the word if they didn't think that it was the word of the Lord. And yet the Bible says they could be wrong, so other people need to look at it. And there's something about community, and especially when we're making high-level prophetic proclamations, like who's going to be president or, or something along those. Or we, we could take a look at a dozen prophetic words of dates that the coronavirus was going to die, <laughs> that it was going to be gone, that it would no longer be talked yeah, about, yeah, yeah. that it would be over. Um, those have all come and went, and some of them, it, they gave the, the day and the month, and it's been a year later, that day and the month have come and gone twice yeah, since yeah, yeah. that prophetic word, and they were, they were not right. Uh, we, we need to have that discerning process of a group of people and stay in community because it says that the voice of the Lord sounds like many waters. The voice of the Lord sounds like many waters. John had that experience. And there, there, I think there's a couple other places in scripture where it says that. And, and it also says that the believers out of their belly will flow rivers of living waters the fullness of the voice of the Lord is recognized in many waters coming together, not in one loud water that happens to be loud. And that is key in discerning. And I think we've, we've, we've become so independent that we don't know how to submit to others and be a part of a community, be a part of a family. We're all just parts of one body. And Paul said, we prophesy in part, we see in part, we know in part. We, we don't get the whole thing. Hmm. And we need to have the humility to believe that. And, and, and that, is, that is one of the concerns. And actually, one, one of the warning signs that I, I would give somebody, because we started talking on false prophets, 
if you start having someone that says that they've got the full revelation and they're not admitting that they see in part, that they hear in part, and that they prophesy in part, run because they're unbiblical. Mm. They're deceived and they may or may not be deceiving other people. Mm. And that that is that's one of those things that you've got to be very careful with. And and I think if if we can we can hold on to faith and be confident that we hear the voice of God and yet still walk in humility. And when we marry those two things, I think we'll be a lot more trustworthy as a prophetic movement, as prophetic people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a good, that was a long and a very, very good answer. <laughs> I've been thinking you know, about this a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed. And, and many people in the comment section actually just put up some. Desiree says, this is so good. And Annika says, this is extremely interesting. And Tracy, so good. I know we have some questions and so forth. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I have some questions today too. So let's see what we get to. <laughs> you know what? Uh, when you were talking about COVID-19, <laughs> I, I have that, I have that, you know, there are so many creative people on YouTube. I don't know if you noticed people that, you know, they do it for the wrong reasons, but they, they, they do the most hilarious, uh, scariest things that preachers have said and done, and they put a beat on it. They put a beat and then they, you know, they make a song out of it. <laughs> and there are so many. Hilarious, I have seen that. <laughs> yeah, there are so many hilarious things happening and one you know i would you know i'm too i'm too serious to do that but i would love to do a show just showing off i mean put up some crazy stuff there and just evaluate it but i know we're not that kind of show <laughs> but i would love to do it all right next question let's see if i got it where did it go i don't know where where it went uh but let me ask you this are there boundaries i mean this is not an easy question but are are there boundaries of what on revelation when it comes mm. to let me give you an example okay um one boundary breach that i can think of is when uh, a prophetic person and i've seen that this happen in you know where I've been in, and not not right now, right, not right here, not in my church, <laughs> but I mean I, I've seen this. I've been I've been in those kind of meetings where somebody has an extremely uh, revelatory gift. It goes goes to somebody in the crowd and tells them the doctor's name and what it says on the you know on the on the doctor's journal. Mm -hmm. What what kind of medicine, what, how long this is going to take and so forth. Just reading their mail, so to speak. Yeah. But then when it comes to, when it comes time to receive money, uh, this is one of the boundaries when I'm, when I'm thinking, mm -hmm. this is way beyond what, what we should do. When it comes to receiving money, they say, it's three people in here, you are going to give ten thousand dollar each and when you do that god is going to bless you and uh, you're going to receive something in return from the lord i mean we believe in sowing and reaping it's not that i'm just saying that mm. for me that's a that's that's a breach that's breaching yeah. a boundary when you go out and give you assumingly, I think some of these people are not just con artists. There are con artists, but there are also people that actually believe that this is how God speaks. There God are. gives revelation that there is three people here because God is so concerned about that money will come out of people's pockets to the prophet in order for them to be blessed. Come on, can I speak yeah. clearly? <laughs> I mean, yeah. And and I'm not saying it's you, you. You see this a lot, but this it's still around, unfortunately. And and that's one boundary. But would you say there are clearly 
you know, is there any other boundaries that you would see? Or maybe you can disagree with me right now. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. But it's, uh, is there boundaries of revelation and, and how can one understand where the boundaries, where the boundaries are? Yeah, I, I think that there, there are definitely boundaries. Um, so Streams of Ministry started by John Paul Jackson. John Paul got together with a number of his friends. Mark DuPont, who's pretty well known in Sweden. I know he's done a lot of stuff yeah. um, there. Uh, so him and John Paul, and then John Sanford, who was a prophetic father. He's passed away. Uh, Bobby Connor, uh, James Gall, and Lauren Sanford, which is John Sanford's oldest son. And I'm thinking that there was somebody else. James, did I say James Gall? It, so they got together and they put together their wisdom from what they've learned and what they've seen from abuses and developed a protocol for New Testament biblical ministry. And it, it's a document, it's got, it's about three to four pages long and it's mainly just points, it's, it's an outline. Um, and it's extremely helpful. So it talks about some of those things and anybody that wants to, you, you can read it on streamsministries.com. If you go to um, about us, it's under what we believe. We have our statement of doctrine and then we have these protocols that are there. Uh, for you to look at. So I, I would I would suggest if you want to go a little bit further, take a look at that because it'll be very helpful. But here, here's a couple things. True revelation from God will never violate scriptural uh, doctrine. So it's not going to be anti-scriptural. It does not mean that you're going to have a proof text for everything because God can tell you to go buy a red car. You can't find a proof text for buying a red car in the scripture. <laughs> So God can talk about other things that are not clear in scripture, but it will never violate scripture. It'll never contradict scripture. So that's one. It will not contradict the nature of God. Uh, so God is loving, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle. So he's not going to break a covenant in a revelation because he is faithful. He cannot break covenants. His word is true because he has decided that he will not break covenants. So that, that that's another principle. But when, whenever there's manipulation, uh, I think that that violates a boundary. And I, I would put like that kind of a thing. Um, can God give revelation to tell someone to give a certain thing? Yes. In a rare experience, occurrence, it can happen. There's one time in scripture where that happens. And it's usually the one that gets preached at most of the times when somebody's doing that. Yeah. You know, Elijah is, <laughs> is going the widow Zarephath and she's out there. Hey, can you get me a glass of water? Oh, yeah. Give me just a second. Oh, while you're going, get me some bread, too. Ah, sorry. Like I'm gathering the last little bit of sticks. We've got enough flour and oil. I'm going to make one yeah, last yeah. cake. Me and my son are going to eat and die. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Just give me some first. And thus says the Lord, the, the flour will not go out. The oil will not go out. Um, if somebody feels like they've got a word like that, there, there's, there's place for it. But if you miss it once, don't trust yourself to do it again. You, you say, if you do this, God's going to do this miraculously and you miss it. Just don't give those kinds of words anymore. You can't trust yourself. You, you've got to know your own motives. And so is it possible? Extremely rare. But yeah, it, it, it's possible. Personally, I won't do it if I'm going to get benefit from revelation like, I'm going to have to have an angel stand in front of me and say, John, you must say this before I will say it. Because I, I know my own heart and I know the capacity of my own heart to, to twist, to misunderstand, to misinterpret. So I just, I, I hold myself to that. Um, you know, if, if, and that's anything that you're going to get the benefit of. I, I don't know how many times that I have ministered uh, comfort and truth back to somebody who somebody prophesied that they were going to be their spouse. And it wasn't God. It was their own desire. It was their own lust. It was their own 
imagination and and it was not God. Um, can God tell you who you're going to marry? Yes. And if he does, keep it to yourself, write it down in a journal. And once you get engaged, then you can bring it out and share it. But until then, don't tell anybody because, or at least don't tell the person because that's manipulation. Exactly. And so it's that thing of manipulation where you're going to get personal benefit from the revelation. Uh, it's, it's just not a good place. It, it violates because manipulation is the exact opposite of how God operates. It's, it's, it violates God's character. He invites. He, he doesn't threaten. Hey, if you don't spend time with me, I'm going to make bad things happen to you. No, he's, he's like, I want you. If you please come, I want you to come. I've opened up the door. I've made the way. I stand at the door and knock. I'm waiting for you to open the door. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to eat with you. Just open the door. But he, he doesn't manipulate. And, and so we, we can't manipulate. So th those would be some key things that I would think about. Like these, these are boundaries. Just do not cross these boundaries. Yeah, yeah, that's good. that's good. Quick, quick, quick question Let's before we before get. get let me see what the time is. Oh, time is running out <laughs> on us. No, I'm going to save my question for hopefully the next time you're with us live. Um, but you know what? You know what? I really feel that, you know, we've been focusing so much on the negative and sometimes it's very good to clear the air and just you know, get these questions out because sometimes we Christian are so nice and we don't want to, we don't want to lift up anything, you know, negative and talk, have a discussion about it. But I think it's very healthy to have a discussion. It's healthy to talk about current events and tell, tell, you know, tell your, your side of the story founded in love, founded on the scriptures of God. But you know what? Let's, Let's invite the Spirit of God right now and just see if God would move and God would touch yeah. somebody. Is that okay with you, John? That, that sounds great. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Father, right now, we're asking you, in all these questions and all these questions marks that people have on the prophetic and on the prophetic ministry and the, the, the gift of prophecy, I'm asking you, would you manifest yourself tonight? Build somebody up, build us up on the most holy faith. Give us your word, give us your vision concerning our future, our hope in the future. Speak to our past, speak to our now, speak to our future, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Risiti mandor lobosia. Wonderful, precious Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Marisi, Marisi, Tranundu, Suturia, La Masaya. Wow. You know, I have this, um, yeah. It, not quite a picture, it, it's more of, a, of an understanding. So it's a mental picture, if you will. Um, but it was of a, uh, a woman that's in the, her mid to late 30s mm -hmm. and with darker hair that is sitting, it seems like, at a computer screen rather than a, a device. I would have thought mobile device. But um, the, And you have two children, mm -hmm. and there's something going on medically and it's in your abdomen. I can't quite pinpoint where at in your abdomen, but it's, it's in your abdomen, which I would assume it has something to do with digestive issues. And, 
And that's the sense that I get, but I'm not quite sure if I'm making that jump because I can tell that it's abdomen and I'm making that jump because that's what's normal or what. So I'll leave that open. Something in the abdomen that is a is a healing issue and and the Lord is beginning to touch you right now. It's almost like a like like the finger of God is touching your abdomen and there's warmth that's being released. And, and the Lord is releasing healing right now to that issue. And so Lord, I, I just bless that. I bless your healing touch that's being released right now. I ask that you would increase, increase the measure of your presence, the measure of your presence. Somebody in the last two or three days, you have had a a, a lack of sleep because of torments in the night. And it almost sounds like your thoughts, like it's anxiety, but it's actually torment. It's another voice um, and it's disturbed your sleep. It's disturbed your dreams, but it's also made it hard for you to sleep. And the Lord is silencing that voice right now. So we break off that torment. We break off that torment in your sleep. We release to you peaceful Thank sleep. You, we break the power of anything that would bring, excuse me, bring anxiety into your heart and into your life. And we release hope. We release hope. Right now, where, where hopelessness has started to grab a hold, we just release hope in the name of Jesus Christ. That torment is broken in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If that's you tonight, please respond to the words given by John. Please respond and let us know what's happening in your house tonight, from my house, from John's house, unto your house. The Spirit of God fell in the upper room and the people who were touched in the upper room went out Peter went to Cornelius' house and when he spoke, the Spirit of God fell. And I really believe that's what's happening right now. From house to house. Shanda Risititi Mataralaba Nakuchurubusia. Ambiri Andiri Nakuchurubu Sitiridididiasu. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. From house to house, I see family meeting family. Oh, I really believe God is going to do it for somebody. You're receiving something tonight or you have received in, in the history of time. And when you're meeting a family, could be that you're in, you're in, you're in expectation of meeting a family. It's like I'm feeling this thing. You've been praying for a meeting that you're going to have with somebody. And from your house to their house. Spirit of God. The tangible touch will flow. Salvation will come to their house. Healing and blessing flow in Jesus name. I also felt that somebody tonight, you're feeling what you are, you're calling it peace. It's the peace of God. You're feeling peace. It's the peace of God. It's the shalom of God. And it's bringing wholeness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, rasa tarala He's bringing wholeness of a mind, of a mind, of a troubled mind. I don't know if it's some kind of mental illness, some kind of anxiety attack. He's bringing wholeness. Thank you for binding up the brokenhearted, Father. 
There's a beautiful anointing for broken hearted. Yeah. Wounds of the soul. Yeah. For the pouring of his love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I just saw the, this picture of someone as as you were saying that. Uh, I just saw this picture of someone that had like labels that were put on them. And they were words that were spoken by someone that was supposed to speak identity, uh, and specifically from your father, uh, but it could also be parents. But they were words of identity that have actually marked and they've hidden parts of your heart so that you find it hard to believe that you're loved and, and you find it hard to believe that you're lovely. And I saw the hand of the Lord just begin to peel off labels one by one and i feel like the lord is is removing the the power of those words that sting that it had that that hardened that deadened part of your heart and made it hard for you to receive love receive and believe that you are loved from other people but also from the lord and, and the lord is is infusing his love into your heart and rewriting that place that you're going to you're going to experience not just information in your head because if somebody asks you does god love you your, your head's going to say yes but your heart has questions sometimes that you won't even let yourself admit but he's coming into that place right now and, and it's labels it's words that were spoken that were placed on you by others and so lord we just break the power of every word that was contrary to your heart over this heart these hearts because this is more than one over these hearts that you long to pour yourself in and you long to pour your love in and so i pray as the apostle paul that they would have power to comprehend the love of god the height the depth the width and the length of the love of god just pour it into them right now but bless them. Bless them, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Some are responding right now. Desiree says, I can feel healing to my brain. Father, we thank you for what you're doing for Desiree tonight. Thank you for stretching out your hand and touching her. Helena suffers from a lot of anxiety. Father, touch Helena tonight. Let the shalom, let the fullness, let the healing occur. Jesus. Rita says, yes, I feel shalom so strong. Thank you. Fullness. Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Wholeness. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my god it's so thick right now it is so thick can i do one more His thing presence yeah please go ahead so I, I noticed earlier a couple of you responded to the the sleep yeah and that torment i feel like there's just a little bit more if you responded to that if that's you if you're in a place where you could just put your hands out because i feel like lord wants to to release something and there's something about a point of faith of you just believing that you're going to release something he's going to pour something into you right now and so if i don't know if you're driving only use one hand <laughs> but if you could put your hands out and just just position yourself to receive right now i, I think there, there's something that's going to be released and it's beginning to form so lord just begin to increase that right now Increase that presence, increase that light. Come. 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 Just begin to stir up that expectation. Begin to stir it up, Lord. Just begin to release that. Now. Release. Freedom from torment. Sleep. Be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your light come. Even where there's been almost like a darkness, a lack of light, that, that, that darkness, that heaviness, just begin to blow right now and release it off of them. 
uh, speak that release, that wind of God to blow through them, blow through their minds, blow through their hearts, and blow through their homes and wash away that torment, especially in the night season in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Mm. There's so many, so many. I think it's at least four or five people that has insomnia or problem with their sleeping and so forth. Thank you for what you're doing tonight, Thank Father. You, Jesus. John, for me, these live broadcasts, it's, it's wonderful to have a talk like this, but sometimes in the middle of a praying season or, or session, I'm sorry, praying session or even when I'm just alone praying for people around the world and so forth, it's sometimes it's like God wants me to step out of the way. Sometimes I'm forgetting I'm on live on a live stream because I'm to, I'm so aware of His presence. Yeah, and that's what I'm feeling right now. As we minister, He's ministering to me. <laughs> he is ministering to me right now. Thank you. It's so refreshing and it's so wonderful. It's just being clothed with His presence. And in that place, it's so easy to yield to the Holy Spirit. Yielding, yielding, yielding. It's a beautiful place. Hallelujah. We're so thankful that we have you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. thank you for being over us. And thank you for indwelling us. We want you to take more, more place. We want to create more space. We want to come with our empty vessels. And we want to cry out for more. We want to cry out for more. John, I'm in a place right now where, where the Spirit the Spirit is taking me on a journey to actually obey Him in every instance. Yeah. He's teaching me to obey when there is, you know, when I could go this way, I could do this thing, but I need to do this and only this, believing Him for the resources and everything that is not there, just to do this. <laughs> and I'm in that place. I mean, you've been on the faith journey, of course, but some, there's something about obeying the Spirit. When the Spirit says, go, go. When the Spirit says, don't doubt, but follow the man that led Peter to Cornelius house there was the miracle there was the breakthrough there were a, the higher purpose with going with the Holy Ghost people's salvation there is something there that is that it's I hate to see a key but it's God wants us to obey because when we obey we we get even more yielded and more filled and more influenced <laughs> and more possessed if you're using Smith Wigglesworth's word possessed by the Spirit of God this is scary for somebody maybe but it's a good thing it's a very good thing John what a night what a night I'm so happy that we had you on tonight let's hope you know you don't need to promise anything but Hopefully, it doesn't have to go so much time since we see each other again. Uh, I know you're a busy man and now you're, you're sitting on in front of cameras many times a week in meetings and so forth, but it would be a great honor and a great joy for you to come on. I have noticed many comments tonight. People are so happy about the level of revelation and the, the teaching that you gave, gave tonight on these different hard topics <laughs> or all these minor controversial topics that I brought up. Uh, so hopefully you will come back. 
<laughs> I would love it's an, that. It's an I, I always love our times together. Yeah. It's always good. <laughs> Great. John, we're going to leave you. For us here in Scandinavia, we're going to bed, but you are heading <laughs> on your day. I guess it's lunchtime soon. Oh, it's been lunchtime. I'm sorry. It's, it's been lunch. You, we're, we're, you're going we're to dinner. Up, we're about halfway to dinner now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, bless you, my friend. And Thanks. if you want to get to know more about um, uh, John and Streams Ministries International, you can go to streamsministries.com. He has a lot of resources that you can get a hold of over there. And also the, the booklet or the pamphlet or the, the pinpoints that you mentioned earlier about prophetic yes. framework. I'm, I'm going to myself look into that. That sounds very interesting. Bless you, my friend. Bless you too. Thank yes. you so much. Say hi to all my Texas friends. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Yes. Bye, John. Hey, take care. Bye-bye. What a night, what a night. I'm just going to linger for a couple of more minutes. You have uh, just been a part of a great broadcast together with Johnny Thomas and me myself and um, there's just a beautiful presence in this house tonight and hopefully God is touching you wherever you're watching from this evening so good so good yeah Bob says thanks some interesting questions and answers yeah I hope that was okay for me to bring up those questions tonight sire encouraging me tonight thank you sir thank you sir see you Wednesday yes on Wednesday we have our live healing prayer every Wednesday and this Wednesday is special because we are gonna have no other and I'm gonna put it up on the screen we are gonna have no other than Paul Harkert from the new wine movement in the UK he's gonna be with us the 10th of March this Wednesday on the live healing session it's gonna be a talk on revival and it's gonna be prayer and ministering time together with him so don't miss out on that now I want to announce something very special if you missed out yesterday's um, talk with Ian Andrews you got to take part of that it was a great talk uh, it's available on our YouTube channel and I so would love for you to join and follow us on YouTube please do we there you can easily see when we schedule the next lives you can easily see upcoming lives you can easily see uh, the the newest uploads and the different kind of playlists when it comes to e-courses we have unfortunately just in the English in in the Swedish language but in the future in English as well and also we have uh, a, a series called Agapa Road series and it's coming a new series soon which is called Follow the Spirit but it's in Swedish it's in Swedish but we do as you notice tonight many English um, broadcast live streams as well and uploads so go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notified each and every time we go live what a night, what a night. I'm so happy that you join. I'm happy I joined tonight. And from my heart to yours, I just want to say a big God bless you. And I see you very, very soon. God bless in Jesus' name.
så roligt att du har varit med i den här livekursen. Men visste du att här på Love Revival TV så har vi flera livekurser som du kan ta del av. Och du hittar dem på vår Youtube-kanal. De ligger i olika spellistor och det är lätt och tillgängligt. Väldigt lätt att ta del av. Jag skulle bara vilja berätta om två kurser som vi har haft innan. Den ena heter Agape Road och den handlar om att bli rotad och grundad i faderns kärlek. Ta emot Guds kärlek och låta den kärleken verka på insidan av oss. Och sen ska den kärleken också nå sitt mål. Någon annan. Ta del av den kursen. Också en kurs i fyra delar. Precis som den här helandes gåvor som du går just nu. Sen skulle jag vilja uppmuntra dig att ta del av en annan kurs som jag undervisar som heter Uppenbarelsegåvorna. Där du får lära dig vad uppenbarelse se, du får, bli ut, får, får förstå att det handlar om att lära känna Gud. Men också att faktiskt förmedla någonting av hopp ifrån faderns hjärta. Att höra Guds hjärta för någon annan och förmedla det vi kallar det profetiska uppenbarelse till någon. Underbart om du vill gå de här kurserna. De finns tillgängliga på vår Youtube-kanal eller så maila du till oss eller gå in på vår webbsida www.loverevival.tv Och så kan du lätt anmäla dig till kommande kurser, få, få förhandsinformation om kommande kurser men också ta del och kanske få kurserna skickade till dig via e-mail. Har du inte prenumererat på vår Youtube-kanal, gör det och klicka på ringklockan så du får notiser om varje gång vi går live och varje gång vi laddar upp nya videos här på Love Revival TV. Jag vill bara uppmuntra dig till sist att vi har så många olika saker som vi gör och på så många olika plattformar men just nu så är vi primärt på Youtube. Där lägger vi, där om du följer oss där så missar du inte. Allt vad vi gör. Tack för att du gör det och tack för att du står med oss. Gud välsigna dig. Ha nu en fortsatt fin kväll.